joined by Senator Tom Cotton. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? Hey, Kevin. Good morning. Good to be on with you. You did an op-ed for the New York Times where you say that the Syrian airstrike has restored our credibility in the world. How so, sir? Yeah, so, Kevin, uh, one of the most important sources of our national strength is our credibility. Uh, our military is unmatched in the world, but without the credible threat of the use of force, uh, then our diplomacy to keep our interests safe uh, is not backed up by that military. And for eight years, the world saw an American president who was reluctant in the extreme to even threaten force, much less use it to defend our interests. Last week, they saw a very different kind of American president who didn't dither for weeks or months or even years, but in a matter of hours acted swiftly and decisively uh, to punish the outlaw Assad regime for gassing little kids and babies, and also to ensure that he understood that if a use of chemical weapons in an area where we have hundreds of troops will absolutely be punished anytime it happens. That showed uh, strength, it showed resolve, and it taught leaders in countries like Russia, North Korea, Iran, China, an important lesson. Senator, some would suggest that it's made a difficult situation even more tense, and it's done little to diminish Syria's capacity to attack. No, Kevin, I would disagree with the second part in particular. As Jim Mattis, uh, our Secretary of Defense and decorated Marine General, said yesterday, uh, Bashar al-Assad knows that he would be very ill-advised to use chemical weapons again, particularly when there are Americans in Syria today. Uh, furthermore, the, air, the situation in Syria, no doubt, is extremely complicated, uh, but it would only get more complicated uh, if Assad thought that he could take a further step beyond the civilian massacres they've used to start introducing weapons of mass destruction onto the battlefield. And again, uh, it, sh it taught an important lesson not just to Bashar al-Assad, but to America's adversaries around the world about the swiftness and decisiveness of American leadership. That's in keeping with bipartisan standards going back to World War II. It was really under the Obama era where you saw a break from it. Senator Tom Cotton, a new poll suggests that the people support the attack overall, but they want a cautious approach from now on. From this point, what needs to be our strategy there? And are, are you convinced the White House has one, and it's not just a reaction by the president? Kevin, I agree that caution uh, is called for in Syria, given the complexity of the battlefield. How however, the very use of force in a proportional punitive strike last week makes the future need for force that much less likely. Anytime dictators like Bashar al-Assad feel that they can get away uh, with incremental encroachments on American interests, it simply encourages them to take further encroachments. Anytime they face uh, punitive retaliatory measures, they tend to stop. Senator Tom Cotton, uh, we did the bombing there. Some people would like to know, then why are we not going to accept refugees? If we're concerned about Syria, we're concerned about the people, why won't, why won't we let them in? Good question, Kevin. I hear that a lot. The simple answer is the way to handle a refugee crisis is not through immigration policy. It's through foreign policy. There are over 10 million Syrians displaced. No one thinks that we can accept anywhere near that many, even a small fraction. So accepting a few thousand more Syrian refugees doesn't really solve the Syrian refugee crisis. The solution for it, as my wife and I heard at a refugee camp in Jordan 18 months ago from a Syrian himself, was not for 10 million Syrians to leave Syria, but for one Syrian to leave, Bashar al-Assad. So all those Syrians can go back to their hometowns and go back to their farms and live the life they want to live, just like all of us here in Arkansas don't want to be forced out of Arkansas, don't want to go to some foreign country. We want to stay in the communities where we chose to live and the farms that we've had in our families for generations. So the solution for a refugee crisis is not immigration policy. It is sound, strong foreign policy. U.S. Senator Tom Cotton, Neil Gorsuch confirmed to the Supreme Court. Your feelings here, sir? I think Justice Gorsuch is going to be a fine addition to the court. Um, and I was surprised that so many Democrats lined up in a partisan filibuster against him. Um, but I'm glad that he's on the court now. Uh, the American people had a chance to speak on this matter in the election last year. And Donald Trump nominated one of the judges that he uh, said he would from a short list. The Senate's confirmed him. Uh, and I'm uh, proud and pleased for Justice Gorsuch. Uh, Senator, uh, the changing of the rules in the Senate uh, to break the filibuster there, does that damage the process long term? And does it allow for more extreme members and justices to be nominated here for the Supreme Court? No, Kevin, I don't think so, because I, I think it's important to look at the traditions and the customs of the Senate, the unwritten rules, if you will, because sometimes unwritten rules are as important as the written rules. For 214 years, from our founding until 2003, there had never been a single partisan filibuster of a single nominee of any kind, Supreme Court, lower courts, cabinet, what have you. 
In 2003, Chuck Schumer, then a new senator from New York, convinced Democrats to begin filibustering judges. And we've gone down this path for 14 years. The Democrats changed the rules in 2013. We changed it this year. But what we did was use a tool that the Democrats abused in 2013 to restore a 214-year-old custom that you don't filibuster nominees that they first violated in 2003. Now we're back to where we were for the vast majority of our history as a country, and I think probably where we should be as well. Senator Tom Cotton, it sounds like I hear that young man in the background. Do <laughs> yeah, yeah crawl, crawling around. How old is that guy now? Uh, Gabriel will be two later this month, and uh, Daniel uh, just turned four months. Um, so lots of people are very generous. They give toys to Daniel, and then, of course, Gabriel steals them. <laughs> well, that's what they do. <laughs> when they get I'm to sure be... one, day, one day he'll be able to pay back his, his bigger brother when he's a little bit bigger himself. When they get to be about uh, 16 and 12, call me. I'll give you some advice. All right? Yeah, no <laughs> I can help you down the Different road Different set of problems. Yeah, no kidding. Senator Tom Cotton, thanks so much. Good to talk All to right. you. All right. 747 News Radio 1029 KRN. Our headlines, Robinson. 